So welcome everybody to this latest GCSE video on 160 Math. In this video we'll be going over an AQA topic test on the high syllabus based on angles. Now there will be a copy of the question paper in the description below for you to download and I certainly recommend that you have a go at this before we go through the answers by watching this video. So let's get started on this AQA GCSE Maths topic test on the high syllabus on angles. So looking at question one, it says that AB is equal to AC, which is equal to AD, and the angles BAD is equal to 90 degrees, and it says work out the size of angle X. You must show your working, which may be on the diagram. Now, the fact that it says that we can show working on the diagram is a massive, massive help, which therefore means we don't really need to justify what the angles are in terms of math notation. We just need to make sure that it is marked correctly. So let's have a look at what we notice straight away. We, so we can see that triangle ABC is going to be an isosceles triangle because here we've got two sides that are the same. So therefore this angle here is going to be 72 degrees and I can then work out what this angle here is which is going to be 180 minus 72 minus 72 which that's going to equal 144 so this angle here is going to be 36 degrees. Now from this we can see then that this angle here is a right angle so if this part here is 36 then this angle here is going to be 90 minus 36 which is going to give me a size of 54. Now from this we can see that if I just get rid of this blue line we can see that those two sides there are the same which therefore means that this triangle of ACD is also going to be an isosceles triangle so this angle here is also going to be X. Now to work out what X is all I need to do is 180 minus 54 which equals 126 and then if I then divide that by 2 which gives me 63 so therefore X is going to equal 63 degrees in which then there I can write that in the answer space there. Moving on to question 2, it says that AB is equal to AC and that AB is parallel to CD. Prove that the triangle BCD is isosceles. Now again, it, on this question, different to the previous one, is that it doesn't allow us to show our market on the diagram. So I need to make sure that I am writing the proper notation for me to justify proving that the triangle BCD is isosceles. Now, if triangle, let's first of all make a note of what the triangle is. So BCD is this triangle here. I'm just highlighting. Now I want to show that that angle there is isosceles. Now how do I do that? Well, I either show that two sides are the same or two angles are the same. Now because the diagram is not drawn accurately, the sides part is going to go out the question. It's all going to be about the angle. So you can either show that this angle here is the same as this angle here or that one of those blue angles is equal to 66 because I don't know what the actual top angle of that isosceles triangle, the unique angle I should say, is going to be. So it could be either. So either I prove that those two blue angles are the same or that one of them is 66 degrees. So let's have a look at what we know. Now what I'm going to do is just get rid of all this notation just so that I can show that it helps. Well from this triangle I can see that this triangle here is isosceles because two sides are the same. So I can work out what this angle here is. And again, it's really important that I do show my angle. So here I've got that C, A, B is going to be, which is actually not the angle that I'm looking for. So let me get rid of that. So it's angle A, C, B is going to be equal to C, B, A uh, as it's an isosceles triangle. And so for therefore to work out what this angle here is, all I need to do is 180 minus 48 and then divide that by 2 in which what I should get is 132 divided by 2. So let me just quickly work that out, which gives me 66. So this angle here is 66 degrees. And again, how do I know that those two ang these two angles here are the same? Well, because obviously the two sides that join those two set the isosceles triangle is going to be the unique one. So 48 degrees is the unique one. Now, because looking at the next bit of information, it tells me that AB is parallel to CD. So therefore, I've got what we call an alternate angle, which is this here. So what I can then write is that CBA is going to be equal to angle D, C, B as they are alternate. 
So from this, this angle here is also going to be 66 degrees. So therefore, as we have got two, these two angles are the same. So therefore, as B, C, D is equal to C, D, B, um, the triangle of B, C, D is isosceles. And you could say as you have two uh, angles the same. So something along those lines uh, would be absolutely fine for the three marks. Moving on to question three, uh, here we've got a crazy diagram. It says in the diagram angles EBF is five times the size of angle EFB and angle DEG is three times the size of angle EFB. And obviously that's noted with 3x and 5x as per. Now the question is asking us to work out the size of angle x for three marks. Now it doesn't say in terms of what we need to do, so in terms of how we show working out, so we just kind of need to go through all these concepts. Now, so first thing I know is that this angle here is going to be the same as 3x. Why? Because it is opposite. So here what I can write is that angle DEG is going to be equal to B, E, F as they are opposite angles. I also know that 5x plus 3x plus x equals 180 as those three angles here are angles in a triangle. Again, I could use the actual notation in using letters, but there you go. So from this, what I've got is I've got 9x equals 180. So then here, x equals 20 degrees. And there I've gone on to prove what I need to. So it's actually quite a simple question for uh, three marks, which I have to say is very generous. So looking at question 3b, it says angle ABE is equal to angle CBF. And are the lines AC and DF parallel? Give your reason for your answer. So ABE is basically this angle here. So what they've said is that this angle here is the same as this angle here. So that we know because it's told us. And what the question is asking us is, is the line AC parallel to DF? Now, just because obviously we're referencing this diagram, let me just put the answer to be just here. So if those two sides are the same, then we know that we can work out what this angle here is by doing 180 minus 5 times 20, which is 100, and we divide that by 2, which gives us 40. So this angle here is 40, and this angle here is going to be 40. Now if, and again, so let me just write that down in the space, so 180 minus 5 times 20 divided by 2 equals 40. So therefore, what we've worked out is that A, B, E, which is equal to C, B, F, is equal to 40 degrees. Now if AC and DF is parallel, then angles A, B, E it should be equal to B, E, F as they are alternate in terms of Z angles. So we know that this angle here is 40. Now to work out what this angle here is, well if x equals 20, it's going to be 3 times 20, which is 60. So as angle A, B, uh, E is not equal to B, E, F, A, C is not parallel to D, F. And there is our final answer for 3B. For question four, it says all angles are in degrees. Work out the size of angle C, D, B. So the angle that we're trying to work out is what this angle here is. And so let's go about working what these are. So first things first, we can see that from the diagram, it's not drawn accurately. And we've got no sense of things being isosceles or equilateral or anything along those lines. So let's have a look at the key facts that we know. Well, if I know that I've got this angle, the first thing we do is find out what X is. So if I combine these two, these angles together, so this angle here and this angle here, what I get is I get this angle is going to be x plus 52. So that's what this big angle is going to be. Now each of these three angles 
all add up to 180 because that angle is inside a triangle. So here what we've got is we've got 2x plus x plus x plus 52 equals 180. So from this, if I just simplify the terms, I've got 4x plus 52 equals 180. I've got 4x equals, and it's going to be 128. So x then equals 128 divided by 4, which gives me 32 degrees. So x equals 32 degrees. Now from this, what I then want to do is work out what this angle here is. Well, if x equals 32, well, that's going to be 32. This angle here is 40. So to work out what this angle here is, so here what we've got is we've got C, D, B plus 32 plus 40 equals 180. So I've got C, D, B plus 72 equals 108. So here what we've then got is C, D, B equals 108 minus 72. Uh, I don't know why I've put 108. Let's change that to 180. And then what we get is we get an answer of 108. And there's where 108 has come from. Then moving on to our last question, which is question five. It says prove. Uh, so the diagram shows three straight lines. All angles are in degrees. It's not drawn accurately. Prove that AC is parallel to DF. And this is worth four marks. So first things first, what we need to do is, well, if the lines are parallel, then we're looking at either alternate angles, corresponding angles, or something along those little supplementary angles to show that the lines are parallel. Now, the two lines that I need to show that are parallel is this line here and this line here. So any angles that I find in terms of the corresponding alternate or supplementary have to involve those two lines. So let's first of all work out what X is. So here we know that straight away, regardless of whether they're parallel or not, these two angles here are parallel. So that means that opposite, sorry, so 4x equals 3x plus 15. So from this, I've got x equals 15 degrees straight away. So if x equals 15 degrees, then this angle here is going to be 8 times 15, which is going to give me 120. And for this angle here, is going to be 4 times 15 which is going to be 60 and so from this in terms of uh, the two sides well if I can then work out what this angle here is which is going to be 180 minus 60 because it's on a straight line is going to be 120 so here as you can see as these two angles I've crossed that out so let me just get rid of uh, that like so so as we can see that these two angles here are the same let's just write that down so as a b e is equal to d e m that the lines a c is parallel to d f and then the reason for that and the reason why we've used that is because we've used corresponding angles. Now obviously there are several different ways in which you could prove this but as long as you're stating the effort and you are showing you working out of working out what x is and then using the correct sort of angle property of parallel on parallel lines then you should be enough to get the full marks as long as you are stating the correct bit of information.